God is good, and today we'll be discussing homebrewing in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. But honestly, these rules pretty much cover homebrewing and tabletops in general. With D&D absolutely blowing up lately, lots of variations of homebrewing take place, even in a more traditional by the book session. I want to enrich your tabletop sessions, if I can, by offering a simple guide 10 tips that will help you understand and get your creative juices flowing. Now first, let's cover what I mean by homebrew, as this term can get tossed around a little bit. When I refer to homebrew, I just simply mean anything beyond the official Wizards of the Coast manuals and rule sets, from flavor rolls to completely handmade worlds and adventures. Practically every DM throws some degree of homebrew in their D&D campaigns, from made-up NPCs to quests to entire areas and alters campaigns to fit better with their group, so to say homebrewing is niche just isn't true. I think we all do it as DMs in some capacity. Before we begin, I want to give a major shout out to the members of Napalm, the sponsors of this channel. I could not do this without you. Thanks to your monthly membership, I'm able to keep this channel running, covering MMOs, RPGs, and of course, puppets. If you are interested in becoming a member of this channel with exclusive perks, please click the join button down below for a list of options. And a very special shout out to the Lords of Napalm, Bounty Code, We Toke Bitcoins, and Jared Woodhouse. Thank you for your highest tier membership. Number one, use other established content first. Look, I get it. You want to burst out of the scene with your content ideas, but I advise to start simpler. Using official campaigns to learn the ropes or the rules is a great way to learn how to balance your homebrew ideas. More on balance in a minute. But from monsters to NPCs to items and treasures, if you don't want to use an official campaign to learn and, and try it out that is out there, then there are also already established homebrew breweries you could try. And then once you get your bearings, you will be able to interpret how to build your own ideas and fully flesh out and realize them much better. Number two, don't go too big at first. So take some baby steps. Start with a one-off, a one-play session campaign. A simple dungeon, for example. You can always add that dungeon into a larger world later. Remember that even creating one new item is homebrewing. And making an entire campaign that will last a year or so is a very very daunting task. You will likely need some experimentation first. And if you have new players, then you really need to understand how they think to make content specific to their playstyles, and in many cases to ensure the adventure is memorable. Running smaller homebrew campaigns is exciting and refreshing for your players, and a lot less work on you. And you will be learning in the meantime. Starting small is also, as I said before, less stressful on you, the creator. And the ideas will always grow. Even when you are at the table, you will find interesting changes that you can and should make on the fly. Number three, have a problem and reason for the adventure. So when you're creating campaigns, big or small, you need there to be a reason for it taking place. That could be a really cool villain doing something horrible that drives the players in action. It could be a mysterious hint at a magical item. It could be anything that your imagination desires. But make sure there is some sort of problem that the players need to address in some fashion. The juicier the reason for the adventure the more invested your players will be in finding the resolution. Number four, be prepared for your players to break your ideas completely. <laughs> it's definitely worth mentioning that no matter how much time and effort and thought, blood, sweat, and tears you put in your creation, it is highly likely that your players will absolutely do the unexpected. And sometimes, actually, most of the time, the adventure goes completely different than you anticipated. And that's okay. That's Dungeons & Dragons, baby. The freedom of player choice is what makes Dungeons & Dragons and tabletop RPGs so engaging fun, and playable. So you just have to accept and, and actually expect that your players will do the unexpected, and many times you as the dungeon master will have to react and roll with the punches. It's part of the fun. Number five, balance is super important. So when you are tweaking with the rules of 5th edition, oftentimes you will find a minor change causes catastrophic differences. They can feel broken or even be exploited by your players. So you have to really pay attention and look at any changes made from many different angles. Players typically frown upon rule changes mid-session, but in some cases you may have to if a mistake was made. Be upfront with your players and tell them that nobody is going to be having any fun with a major exploit in the rules. Helping balance everything really comes down to your understanding of the official rules before tweaking and gives even more reason 
to play official campaigns or existing homebrews first to get a real feel for each of the rules and using them or witnessing them in action is the best path to understanding. Number six, don't forget your targeted audience. It's so, so, so important that you don't forget who your targeted audience is. Are you making your homebrew for your players only? Then think about what they enjoy, events that happen that you saw a sparkle of joy or adventure in their eye. Try to key in on things like that to make your homebrew memorable and enjoyable for them. If you're making your homebrew for a wider audience, then make sure you find a niche that you are going for in that wider group and find ways to make it unique and interesting for that particular group of players that you're wanting to target. Understanding your end goal is super important as well as you are planning and designing your homebrew, but always keeping in mind who is it that you are trying to appease. Number seven, have a theme. Most great campaigns, although there are exceptions, have some sort of theme. It could be a revenge story, or it could be based on loss of a loved one. It could be based completely on morality or mortality, but having a theme and sticking with it can cause some very high emotional responses and truly make the campaign stick with people for a long time. Weave your story points in such a way that it encourages growth and development beyond simple level ups of your party. Knowing what your theme is will help you also with your endings. Number eight, goals for you and goals for your players. Another great piece from official D&D campaigns is personal goals for the players. Finding a particular item, looking for a long lost friend or relative, whatever it may be, then place those things in your world. This immediately attaches your players to the campaign, and then you can toss hints and things with NPCs, maps, and whatever you would like. This is a very powerful tool and will make for very exciting things to happen at the table. You also need to set goals for yourself in the creation of the world and campaign items, maps, whatever it is you need, and decide what you want out of your homebrew with your goals. Number nine, don't forget the person purpose, having fun. Never lose sight that the true goal is to have fun, both for you as a creator and for your players. Don't get hung up on the minute details. Make sure first and foremost that it is a ton of fun. You will be surprised how much time you might spend on every single little detail of a particular dungeon only to find your players stomp their way through it without giving a second look at all those small details. The opposite can be true also for some players. They want the small details and care less about the speed or progression. This all comes back to knowing your audience, what we spoke about earlier, and also playing something with them first to really understand what that targeted audience really is. Number 10, world building is key. The environment matters. It's what is going to set the pace and be where the players are spending their time and mental energy. Make sure you describe in terms the players can grasp before starting. That can be as simple as saying, this is a very low fantasy setting. Or it could be something like, this is like Star Wars mixed with the dark world of Diablo, for example. Setting the expectation will help the players envision things better, lay out what is expected and what is not in your world. Typically, the first sessions are all about learning the history and understanding this world, but you also have to make sure you don't pander too long on trivial details unless that's what your targeted audience wants, of course. It is super important that you have a world that is interesting and full of mystery to get the players invested and wanting to return. And this can take time and will certainly take a lot of your thought and love. And that is the 10 tips to help you with your homebrew for Dungeons and Dragons. I hope you found this useful and I hope it inspired you to keep pushing along and making great content in this wonderful world of tabletop RPGs. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, drop me a like and a comment, to help me fight the YouTube algorithm and level myself up. And if you love D&D, make sure you check out my Dungeons and Dragons Choose Your Own Adventure campaign right here on YouTube. At the end of each video, you decide what happens next, and instead of just being a video you watch, this is an adventure you play. I did use clips from that adventure right here in this video. Give it a shot though, and I bet you fall in love. And until next time, my friends, God bless and happy gaming.